Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, because you are raising up a people of power a people of purpose and a people of praise and lord we thank you because we are part of this glorious body you are racing up to go and tell redemption story everywhere in jesus name we thank you for the blood of jesus christ as accomplished in our own lives in our families and in this church lord we now want to take this story of the cross and a story coming from calvary and the story of the death of christ and the burial of christ and the resurrection of christ and the good thing christ has done we want to take this story everywhere we pray all the people that listen to us they will believe they will yield their lives and lord they come out of their sin out of darkness and they come into the light into your righteousness in jesus name and when the trumpet finally shall sound and the dead in christ shall rise and we who are alive will be caught up together with them we pray oh lord none of our brothers and sisters here today none of our brothers and sisters hearing this message and in the mini congress anywhere none of us will be missing in jesus name set your good heavenly supernatural mark on every one of us that the devil will see us and run send that mark upon us that evil people when they see us they will bow they will bend and they will surrender and submit in jesus name i will pray that your word will be in our mouths your fire in our spirit and the spirit of god upon us that lord as we tell the story of what jesus did on the cross of calvary i pray that you open hearts up you open communities up you open regions up and you open nations up that multitudes in their millions will come to know you as personal lord and savior in jesus name we're going to the word of god now lord i pray that you give the knowledge of the word to every brother here and every sister here and i pray lord that we will never be the same again transform us or become ministers of fire thank you lord for the answer in jesus mighty name we pray thank you very much what a wonderful congregation you are we'll come back to the word of god now we're looking at hebrews chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 12 we're talking about redemption through his blood we're talking about the blood of jesus christ he died on the cross of calvary he shared his blood for us and then he said because of this blood of the new testament which is shed for the remission for the removal for the forgiveness for the redemption of the people that believe he said now we should take that story and we should take that sacrifice of the lord jesus christ and go and tell it everywhere that there is redemption that there is salvation that there is righteousness and that all the benefits from heaven can come upon our lives upon our souls because of the blood of jesus christ redemption through his blood hebrews chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 12 hebrews chapter 9 verse 12 neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood that is the lord jesus christ because he died because he shed his blood and because he spilled that blood for your forgiveness for my forgiveness and for the forgiveness of all the sinners in the world he said by his own blood in that verse 12 he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal what redemption for us by the shedding of the blood by spilling the blood because of his death sacrificial death right now we are told he has obtained eternal redemption for us verse 13 for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an ephah sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh how much more you know what he's saying he's saying if the old testament people like david could say bless the lord oh my soul well because he has forgiven all my sins and he has taken away all my sicknesses and they got that from the blood of animals that's what the sacrifice he said if the blood of bulls and goats and sheep 
could do that for them that now they could go to the Lord think about Enoch and think about the righteousness he had Christ had not come at that time it was by the sacrifice of the blood of animals they got all that he said if they got that through the blood of animals how much more shall look at it the blood of christ wonderful christ the son of the living god christ emmanuel god with us if the blood of animals could give forgiveness and give pardon and give peace of mind and give righteousness and give intimacy with god that some people even became friends of god because god said you think about moses and you talk about moses i speak to him face to face and the only sacrifice that did that was the sacrifice of animals and he said if the blood of animals could do that how much more the blood of christ then he says who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god Watch your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Look at verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the false testament, they which are called might receive the promise of what? eternal inheritance is telling us that all the things that those people receive temporary and earthly but now because of the shedding of the blood of jesus christ the redemption we have the inheritance we have and the salvation we have it says eternal inheritance eternal redemption eternal blessing praise the lord and to know that we're living in this new testament age when we can have all this by the blood of the lamb look at verse 22 it says in verse 22 and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood there is no remission without the blood of jesus christ there is no remission brothers and sisters can you look up here for a moment you know sometimes as i look at the world in which we live you know in december i was overseas in the west and all those people they say christmas 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 they're talking about the birth of jesus they don't publicize the easter time like that they don't do anything like that during the time of calvary when christ died on the cross of calvary when he shed his blood all they are making noise about and see different kinds of light here and some decorations there and neon lights there and this one and this one there and then music in the air and everything is going on and we say what is happening christmas time christmas time and then they, they sing a song they said and man shall live forever because of christmas day think about that they said man shall live forever they said eternal life eternal redemption because of christmas day and the bible says no it's not just the birth of jesus it's the death of jesus it's the blood of jesus when i see the blood i will pass over you will somebody help us tell them over there somebody help us tell them over here it's not just the birth of jesus it's not just the life of jesus it's the blood that he shed and because he shed that blood he himself said this is my blood of the new testament that is shared for the remission removal redemption of the sins of many and here the bible is telling us it tastes the blood it tastes the blood and they overcame the dragon they overcame him by the blood of the lamb it is the blood see behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world if we walk in the light as he is in the light then he says we have fellowship with one another and then he says the blood of jesus christ his son does what cleanses us from all sin is the blood the redemption we have the salvation we have the sanctification we have and the hope of heaven we have is not based on christmas it's based on what the blood of jesus the death he died for us that's why it says in that verse 22 without the shedding of blood even though he was born yes that was good that was good and but without calvary without his death there'll be no salvation go tell them it's the blood of jesus go and tell them it's what is the blood what will you tell them 
behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world it's because he shed the blood on the cross of calvary because god said when i see the blood i will pass over you that means judgment will pass over you calamity will pass over you eternal wrath will pass over you and then god brings you into the kingdom because of the blood that is shed for you hebrews chapter 13 we're looking at verse 12 it says wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with what with his own birth is that it how does he sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate it's the blood it's the blood the blood of the lamb the blood of the lord jesus christ look at that same chapter verse 20 it says now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant you see the connection of the blood eternal everlasting redemption eternal everlasting inheritance and now it says even eternal everlasting covenant and it's still the blood everything is based on the blood and i pray that god will help you that you will get the understanding and the revelation of what the blood of jesus christ has provided for you has provided for me has provided for the world then it says i make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen. that's your new year amen. amen god bless every one of you amen. now we're looking at this message redemption through his blood i divide the message to three parts number one pardon and sonship through christ's redeeming blood number two purity and sanctification by christ's redeeming blood and then preaching the sufficiency of christ's redeeming blood there's no other thing to preach is blood bringing salvation is blood bringing salvation is blood bringing sanctification is blood bringing the redemption is blood giving us eternal inheritance number one what's number one again pardon and sonship through christ's redeeming blood and i want you to understand you know sometimes uh, if uh, before you came to know the lord i don't know how many times you had the gospel before you got saved and you know some of us we didn't get saved in time you know why because we thought while well, we're praying and praying if i feel good then that means i'm forgiven if i have joy that means i'm forgiven and then if i'm able to you know do this and that that means uh, i'm forgiven then i have assurance of my salvation but it's through the blood the pardon comes through the blood and the sonship comes through the blood and because jesus christ has died he has done everything necessary for all our sins to be forgiven he has done everything necessary to for us to become the sons and the daughters of god and as we're holding on in faith to the blood of jesus christ your assurance will go deeper in jesus name and sometimes when somebody has you know maybe carelessly but leading and he's done something wrong then the devil will be saying uh -huh, i catch you now now i catch you you will never be able to come back again and he begins to cry and to pray and to plead and to do all that and he reads many promises but he forgets that restoration is by the blood of the lamb and the blood is shed already and because the blood of the lamp is shed already all you need to do is to hold on to that blood don't let the devil take confidence in the blood and faith in the blood and your trust in the blood of christ don't let the devil take that away from you and you're saying oh lord nothing in my hand i bring simply to the cross i cling they will say christ you are the rock of ages clay for me let me hide myself in thee not my emotion not my feeling what can wash away my sin tell me out loud nothing but the blood of jesus what can take all the stains away nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious blood that flowed from his ribbon side and that moment when you have faith in that blood that flowed from his own side every sin will be gone 
backsliding will be gone and then the joy of the lord once again and the assurance that you are now a child of god everything comes back in jesus name we're looking at pardon and sonship through christ redeeming blood in ephesians chapter one we're looking at verse seven in whom we have it also in whom we are going to have but presently today at this very moment i have it you have it i said i have it you have it in whom we have redemption through his blood wonderful we have it already and it is through his blood it is not through our feeling it's not through our good works it's not through i give this i give that through his blood and then he says the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace that tells us then in that blood there is pardon in that blood there is redemption in that blood there is sonship in that blood we come to know the lord colossians 1 verse 12 giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who has delivered us i'm going to read that again who has delivered me did i hear you who has delivered me from the power of darkness and has translated me into the kingdom of his dear son he says he delivered us then he translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son the question is how did he do that i, I see many people in this our beloved country and then they're rushing here they're rushing there and i say what are you looking for what do you say we're going for deliverance we're going for deliverance i said are you born again yes i'm born again do you know the blood of jesus yes i've heard about that before and do you believe there's redemption in the blood yes i believe and what are you still looking for i'm looking for redemption but i say according to the word he has delivered me from the power of darkness and he has translated me into where the kingdom of his dear son can i tell you something you know here is one country a and there is another country b let me say that again here's one kingdom a here's another kingdom b and then you did something in this country a in this kingdom a and the police people of country a they're looking for you looking for you looking for you all of a sudden you sneak out into to the airport all of a sudden you get to the airplane and then you come here to country b and then con kingdom b and the police people here their uniform will not go beyond the border there and the authority will not go beyond the border there and something they hold in hand is call it warrant the warrant they have will not go beyond the border here then they realize aha you are now in kingdom country b and then the only thing they can do the only thing they can do for them to be able to catch you is to send letter appeal information to country b and say we're looking for that man we're looking for that woman send him back extradict him and then if this country access to send you back then you come back to square one if this country says no way we don't want to send him back he's under our cover these people will never catch you let me explain here the kingdom of darkness all those people they were looking for you and searching for you and then you look up like this then you see jesus christ he bore your punishment he bore your calamity all the consequences of evil he bore everything and jesus bore your curse and then you say watch and these people are searching for you searching for you mm, by faith you take the aeroplane of faith and then you cross over in the kingdom of his dear son all those people police were black dress all those people with dagger in their hand all those people when they have they write your name they say where is this where is this and they're looking for you and then they see that you have crossed over to this side there's no way they can catch you there's no way they can hold you the only thing they can do is to be able to talk to the authority of country b the kingdom of light kingdom of jesus where you are now and say jesus 
We're looking for what's your name? We're looking for so and so. Release him to us because they cannot cross over. If they cross over, they lose their sin. If they cross over, they lose their hatred. If they cross over, all their magical power, once they cross over to this other country, all their hatred, everything they have, they will lose. And then they will become your friend. So they don't, they don't want to cross over. They are still there and they are looking for you. And they said, Jesus, release him. Does Jesus answer the prayers of sinners? Will he release you unto them? You are forever free. The people who are running about looking for redemption and looking for break the yoke and break the cause and do this for me and do it, they are ignorant. And thank God the Lord is opening your eyes. Let, let, let's read that verse 13 again. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Look at verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood through his blood it's because of the blood of jesus if you believe that this morning you're free yeah. sin will not have authority over you yeah. evil spirits will not have authority over you yeah. satan will not have authority over you yeah. because there is a redemption and that redemption we find in the lord jesus christ and he says even the forgiveness of sins your sins are forgiven let's come back now to romans chapter 3 romans chapter 3 here is what he's telling us romans chapter 3 verse 23 it says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god being justified tell me the next word freely that's another challenge and problem that people have they don't understand that salvation is free they don't understand that redemption is free they do not understand that this sin we call righteousness and redemption and then the grace of god in our lives they do not know it's free uh, you know that's why in their churches uh, uh, look up here for a moment uh, if somebody is living is you know, going to that church and going to that church and eventually the fellow dies and then the priest will go back to the record of what they call pastor's deal and you know the money they should have contributed and then will tell the relatives and say well your person that died is owing so much amount of money he didn't pay the pastor's deal and he didn't pay the lunch deal he didn't pay the church deal he didn't pay the pulpit deal he didn't pay the um, conference deal he didn't pay the you know easter period deal he didn't pay the christmas deal he didn't pay you know child naming deal and everything and say we're not going to bury him until you pay all the deals for him or for her and then they put her running around so that the person will get to heaven and so the person will get to heaven all the dues will rake everything together and then we come to give to the priest and then the fellow now ah uh -huh. now that you are paying this money this money will transfer the person from purgatory and transfer into heaven straight lie everybody say lie, lie. that thing doesn't work that thing is not the truth all the money you pay after the fellow is dead the fellow is gone look at that verse 24 again be justified tell me the word freely not money not your deal it is because of what jesus christ did on the cross of calvary being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus verse 25 whom god has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood that is it again is the blood of jesus christ when i see the blood i will pass over you and if this moment you are believing the blood that jesus christ shed for you on the cross of calvary you are free you are justified you are saved and then the guilt and the condemnation of sin all that is gone it says through the blood face in the blood of jesus and then it says to declare his righteousness for the remission removal forgiveness of sins that are passed through the forbearance of god romans chapter 5 verse 6 for when we are yet without strength in due time christ did what he died 
for the ungodly then he tells us in verse 8 but god commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us much more than being now justified by what by his blood that comes over and over in the word of god that the justification the forgiveness the righteousness and be just and right in the sight of god is by his blood he says be justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him the wrath of god will never come upon you anymore because of the blood that jesus shed and because of that blood he grants us redemption because of that blood he grants us adoption into the family of god let's see what that redemption does in galatians chapter 4 verse 5 galatians chapter 4 we're looking at verse 5 to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons he adopts us into his family now we are sons and daughters in the lord and because ye are sons god has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father that word abba is like when we say daddy father that is you're so close to god you're so near to god because the blood has washed you and the blood has cleansed you and because of the cleansing and the washing and because of the righteousness in the blood of the lamb now you can say praise the lord i call him father praise the lord i call him daddy because his blood has set you free we're looking at ephesians chapter 2 we're looking at ephesians chapter 2 i'm coming to verse 13 but before verse 13 why don't you read verse 12 that at that time you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. As you look at that verse 12, it says in the past, this is who we were, this is where we were. It said, we were without Christ. It said, we were aliens, strangers. He said, we were strangers to the covenants in the plural. Covenants of promise. All the covenants of God. Covenant for salvation, for healing, for deliverance. When we were in sin, when we didn't know the Lord. We were strangers to those covenants in the plural. Having no hope and without God in the world. Look at verse 13. But now, but now things have changed. I said things have changed. Who didn't know God? Who didn't have God? Who didn't have Christ? Who didn't have forgiveness? Who had only guilt and condemnation? It says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes far off are made near by what? By the blood of Christ. Well, it, that settles it all. That settles it all. It says, we're far away. And then we're just groping in darkness and in sin. And the Lord said, come. On what basis did he say, come? Jesus died for you. How could he say, come? Because he shed his blood for you. He bore all your guilt, all your punishment, the wrath that shall come upon you, came upon him. And Jesus paid it all the whole price of your redemption the whole price of all your guilt he bore it all and because he bore it all now you are made near by the blood of christ for he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us you know even between us is the lord that has broken down the middle wall of partition and now we're united by the blood of the lamb you know before you are born again when you hear somebody's intonation that person is coming from the southern part of the country say we have nothing to do with that fellow or you hear the intonation is coming from the another part of the country say i have nothing to do with that person but then you know the blood of jesus just broke down all the middle wall of partition now there is love now there is unity now there is fellowship and look at us here you know somebody from the south and from the east from the north all of them sitting together and you know i didn't hear what you said can you what's the verse and the fellow did, didn't say ah, looks like from another tribe you're asking me to tell you i'm not going to tell you now we just share everything we have together wonderful love wonderful unity 
a wonderful fellowship. You know, we're serving the food and then, you know, the thing did not get to me and, and I'm telling my brother here, my sister there, I'm saying, well, it has not come to me and, you know, I have it. not me, I'm just preaching, you understand? I don't have ulcer. Say, Pastor, you don't have ulcer. But I'm just, can I preach? I said, can I preach? Okay, the fellow is just saying that, you know, I'm having this ulcer. Remember, it's not me, it's them. Can you just give me your food? And if oh, by all means, eat everything. I'll do without food. Because of that love and that fellowship that the Lord has given us, I pray that this fellowship will never end. And, you know, the way we interact together over here, we don't know it's from the south or from the north. It's another part of Africa or this other part of Africa from outside Africa. We're just one. And I pray that this oneness, the Lord will make it deeper and richer and higher in our church in Jesus' name. And it's the blood, the blood of the Lamb that has done that, that makes us to forget all the various sins. I'm telling you, if you go to another kind of Christian meeting now, and you know, they're having whatever meeting they're having, and they're divided because of politics. And even members of the same human family, and this one is for this party, that one is for this party, and they're almost, they are ready to kill one another. But over here, which party do they belong to? The party of Jesus. Where are you? Praise the Lord. And party politics doesn't divide us here. We are one. I said we are one. One with me. Whether you like it or not. You understand? You know God will surprise you when we get to heaven. Your mansion. If you don't smile at me now. Forever. One thousand years. One million years. You'll just be stuck there by my side. And you know, your mansion will be by my mansion. I'm not talking of the people who are happy. I mean, I'm saying people are not happy. But whether you're happy or not, we're going to heaven together. And when we get there, every morning you wake up, it's my face you will see. Better get used to seeing that face now because for all eternity, we are there together. Because of the blood of Jesus. Say, because of the blood of Jesus. The Lord who has brought us together will never allow us to be divided in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now purity and sanctification by Christ's redeeming blood. Purity and sanctification by Christ's redeeming blood. We're looking at Titus, Titus, Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2. We're looking at it from verse 11. Titus chapter 2. We're reading from verse 11. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live how? Soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us. That's when he shed his blood. That's when he died for us. He gave his, himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. How many iniquities? All. all. No iniquity remaining. This year you are going to live a new life. The sin that you used to put your mouth on the ground and rub your mouth in dust, all those sins will not overcome you this year in Jesus' name, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. He does that by the blood of the Lamb. We're looking at um, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's see what the blood of Jesus Christ does. Verse 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Look at verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. It's by the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 19. It says, having therefore bread and boldness to enter into the holiest. How? 
by the blood of jesus that is to be holy and to enter into the holiest the holiest of experiences you are born again and then you are sanctified and you enter into into the holiest it says it is by the blood of jesus it tells us in verse 20 by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having an high priest over the house of god let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water it gives us purity of heart without purity that purity of heart will not be able to see the lord because the lord said in matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 8 matthew chapter 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart tell me the rest for they shall see God only the pure in heart only the pure in heart and it is this purity of heart that is done by the purifying of the blood of the lamb cleansing by the blood of the lamb and sanctification by the blood of the lamb that is what brings us the purity of heart and we need it the cleansing the sanctification the purifying by the blood if we're going to see the lord at last psalm 24 psalm 24 i'm reading from verse 3 psalm 24 verse 3 yeah it tells us in verse 3 it said who 24 verse 3 who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that has clean hands and what and a pure heart it is the blood of the lamb that does that for us when the blood of jesus christ flowing from calvary the blood of the lamb that was shed for you when it flows into your heart all the iniquities impurities and defilement and whatever it is everything is cleansed away and now you have a pure heart a sanctified heart and then a heart that is made holy by the blood of the lamb and then your hands too they are clean by the grace of god and i pray that this great work the work of grace the lord has done will be permanent in your life and permanent in your ministry in jesus name ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 25 ephesians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 25 sanctification holiness purity purity of heart that is done by the offering of the body of christ by the death of jesus christ by the cleansing purifying of the blood of the lamb ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 husbands love your wives any husband here where are you i hear of some people they are not here keep up your hand keep up your hand I'm not talking about you now. I'm talking about some other people out there. I hear of some husbands that beat their wives. Thank God they are not here. If you are here, wave, wave your hand at me. Are you here? No, you are not the people that beat your wives. I hear of some people that they don't give, a, they will call it chop money. They don't give to their wives. They are not here. If they were here, I would have made them to stand up. You see their faces. But all of you here, you love your wives. Where are you? God bless you. Let that love in this new year go deeper and higher. And the measure of that love as Christ also loved the church. No grudges. Give me a good amen. amen. No hatred. Amen. No pack your load and go. Amen. Why did I marry you, by the way? I didn't know this is the way you are. Anybody there? No. Our languages will change. Yeah. Our attitude will change. Yeah. Husband, come back now. Husband, tell me. No. Tell me again. No. Continue. No. no, I mean, continue that verse. And then, give himself. Give time. Give attention. Give everything you've got. So that, that wife, that woman, will know that you actually love her. Only her. Not her plus half of another woman. Some people have one and a half wives. They don't marry the second one, only half. All their discussion, all their interaction, half with the other person. If they were here, I would preach to them. But because they are not here, I'll continue. Are they here? No. no. So, you who are here, husbands, 
love your wives even as christ loved the church and gave himself for the church look at the next verse now that she might sanctify the reason why jesus gave himself and the reason why jesus shed his blood is so that he might sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the word that he might present ye to himself what kind of church a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such sort of thing but that it should be holy and without blemish he did that by giving himself by shedding his blood we're looking at first john chapter one first john chapter one i'm reading from verse seven but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and tell me the blood the blood the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from how many sins all sin every form of sin hidden sin besetting sin adamic sin whatever sin it is the the original sin it cleanses us from all sin and today as we come back to the altar of the lord if there's any remnant remaining there the blood of jesus will cleanse you and purify and put you completely and totally perfectly in jesus name we're looking at revelation when we eventually get on the other side of heaven see what will happen if you ever get there and thank god you are going there i said thank god you are getting there what gets us there is our faith in the blood of the lamb look at it in revelation chapter 7 verse 9 after this i beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and be and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our god which seated upon the throne and unto the lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts that's the uh, the living creatures and then it says and fell on before the throne on their faces and worship god saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of God great trouble trial temptation tem and then tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb in the blood of the lamb you see even to get to heaven and to sing in heaven and to shout the praises of the lord in heaven it's only through the blood the blood salvation here only by the blood inheritance here only by the blood redemption here only by the blood peace of mind here only by the blood and then the forgiveness of everything you've ever done wrong only by the blood sanctification only by the blood everything you get deliverance only by the blood and then when we get over there on the other side and now we're rejoicing in heaven only by by the blood when i see the blood i will pass over you and the blood is shed already and there's nothing you are going to add to that blood and there's nothing you are going to take away from that blood and that salvation is yours now as you believe and say thank you jesus i believe that you died for me i believe your blood was shed for me and then you go tell other people who are trying to depend on the works of their hand go and tell other people who are trying to depend on what they pay in their denomination go and tell other people who are trying to say that when they go to wash by the riverside when they burn this candle when they do this when they do that or when they you know become a slave a slave to their priest a slave to their church father a slave to their overseer a slave to their pastor they think it's a slavery to their leader that is going to get them to heaven slave trade is gone slave trade is even gone from the world and there should be no slave trade in our church I said there should be no slave trade in our church. You know, people owning slaves and, you know, telling them, I'm, I'm your master. If you don't obey me, you are going to go to hell. Well, by the blood, we're set free. Give me a good, good amen. 
Now, because the people out there, they are ignorant, we need to go and tell them. I'm making up my mind that this year, I'm going to tell everybody I meet. I said, I'm going to tell everybody I meet. Everywhere, every creature, every city, every nation, anywhere I get to, the number one thing I'm there to do is to tell the story of redemption. Are you like that? I said, are you like that? We're going this year, we're going to tell them, what are we telling them? That the blood is sufficient. We don't have to do any other thing. The blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient. And as we tell them, their sins will be forgiven. As we tell them, they'll be redeemed like us also in Jesus' name. Point number three now, preaching the sufficiency of Christ's redeeming blood. Preaching the sufficiency of Christ's redeeming blood. Christ is sufficient and his death is sufficient and his blood is sufficient. It is his blood that has purchased us and made us a church, the church of the firstborn. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 verse 28, Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 verse 28 Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers Who made you overseer? Who made you pastor? Who made you minister? Who made you as fellowship leader? Who made you zona leader? Who made you a servant of God? the holy ghost you know some people because god uses our state overseers to appoint them they think the final, that's the final authority and because the lord used the gs to appoint them they think that's the final authority but it says over the congregation over which the holy ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of god which he has purchased purchased with his own his own what his own blood the church is purchased with his own blood because he died because he sacrificed and because he shared his blood he says that's the reason why you become part of the assembly of saints part of the assembly of the called out people and he says he has purchased that church with his own blood now we are to preach that some people will try to muzzle you or a kind of shut your mouth as if no you shouldn't uh, speak about it but you have a commitment on your life a calling upon your life a covenant upon your life that this death of jesus you are going to publicize it everywhere you are going to tell everybody only jesus can save only jesus can save jesus only jesus ever jesus all in all we preach he is savior he is sanctifier his baptizer is healer and he is the coming king we'll tell everybody that we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 4 acts chapter 4 verse 10 be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel all the people of every nation that by the by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom he crucified whom god has raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you hold this referring to christ referring to jesus is a stone which was set at naught of you builders which is become the hedge of the corner neither is there salvation in any other neither is there forgiveness in any other neither is there redemption neither is there a kind of eternal life in any other neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved that's the only salvation that's the only savior and because he is the only savior we want to go out and tell other people that this is the savior the only savior and the sufficiency of christ redeeming blood i wanted to come down now to verse uh, to verse 17 but that it spread no further among the people you see all those people detractors and persecutors they say that it spread no further well, thank God, if they had succeeded, it would not have spread to our country here. That is spread no further. If they have succeeded, it should not have spread to our continent of Africa over here. If they had succeeded, it should not have spread even to Europe or to America or Asia or any part of the world. That's what they wanted. They said, confine it here. 
do it in your locality do it in your in your place it spread no further and you know there are still some people like that you know they're afraid that it spread no further and i'm saying that it's going to spread further i said it's going to spread further because you know as i am on the go and you on the go and we on the go together anywhere we are we're spreading it i said we're spreading it that the blood of jesus cleanses us from all sin that forgiveness and salvation and redemption and righteousness and sanctification it will spread everywhere it will spread to your village it will spread to your city it will spread to your local government this word of eternal life that jesus died for sinful men you go and tell everybody and spread it and spread it and spread it you know in the early church every day it was spreading every day it was spreading and we're saying those good old days they are coming to this country and to this continent every day this gospel of the lord will be spreading in jesus name i'm believing that every day of this new year souls are going to be getting saved and the redemption in the blood of jesus christ is going to be spreading from house to house it's going to be spreading from city to city it's going to be spreading from nation to nation throughout this year every day multitudes 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 will be getting saved in jesus name now now listen if you don't spread it you are fulfilling not the will of god you are fulfilling the will of those pharisees you are fulfilling the will of those people that hated jesus christ when you close your mouth you are doing the will even without doing any other thing without even going to adultery fornication immorality just by closing your mouth and then you don't spread it you are fulfilling the will of the haters of christ but when you say whether you like it or not i don't mean you i should say whether they like it or not is that right because i know you like it i said you like it you want this salvation to spread everywhere you want this redemption to spread everywhere and you want this eternal life to spread everywhere and i'm saying now whether they like it or not it is going to spread in jesus name and then the lord is going to bring multitudes into the kingdom of god because you are spreading it i am spreading it everywhere we go once again we will shout this message and tell the story of redemption and multitudes are going to come together are going to come to the lord look at verse 17 but that is spread no further uh, among the people let us strictly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name look at verse 18 and they called them and commanded them that command is coming too late i said this command is coming too late we have got a commandment from the lord of lords already we have got a commandment from the king of kings already we have got a commandment from savior from the lord jesus christ already and since we have got this final commandment and this unique commandment and this authoritative commandment any commandment that comes after that contradicting the first one i've got that one is useless i said that one is useless so they call them and this is too late anybody who calls you to tell you don't spread it don't be a pastor don't be an evangelist don't be a soul winner and he says i'm commanding you you don't have any right to pray you say i'm sorry sir this commandment is coming too late i got another commandment already and that commandment is the priority of my life where are you it will be the priority of your life spread it everywhere tell them everywhere that jesus christ is lord that jesus christ is savior and if anybody tries to threaten you it's an empty threat it will not hold water it will not hurt you because the everlasting arms are underneath you and until you finish what you are supposed to do here in the world nobody can touch your life i said nobody can touch your life if they try it they will remember because something will happen because this touch not mine anointed i am anointed i said i am anointed anywhere i go you know anybody that touches the anointed of the lord is between them and the lord because i know i carry anointing everywhere i go and i transfer that anointing onto you you carry that anointing you know i'm so sure in my heart you know elijah was sure that this widow woman had enough food to feed himself and the woman and the son but the woman was not sure 
But Elijah was sure. Maybe you are not sure, but I am sure that you carry the anointing already. I said you carry the anointing already. Any threat, any threat against your life, you'll come back next year, January. If Jesus tarries, you'll tell me, Pastor, I got it. You said so. Any, as I wait everywhere, and they tried to touch me like this, their hands dried up. God did it before God can do it again. He will do it in your life in Jesus' name. And so, look at the empty threat in verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in this name. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. That's your cup of tea. That's what they told them. And then in verse 20, it says, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard that we that is we're going to do what the lord has told us to do how did they do it then because they said it should not spread it should not spread how did they do it come now to chapter 5 chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 42 and daily everybody say daily ah, i didn't hear you every day every day they were doing it every day and daily in the temple and daily in every house everybody say every house they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. They didn't stop, we will not stop. They couldn't stop them, nobody will stop us. It says, every house, every house, every house, every house. It's like you're going back to your cities, to your towns, and to all the places you go. You're looking, every, any soul saved in this house, enter there. Let there, let there be a salvation in that, in that place in Jesus' name. Go to the next. Don't omit any house. Don't go over any house. Whoever is there, whoever is not there, when you go there, you're spreading it in every house. Spread it in every house. Want to be a wonderful thing in, in our cities, in your city where you come from every city will have the track every city will hear the message every city every house in the city where there'll be somebody there that is born again i said somebody there that is born again imagine now in your mind sigh and think think about your city look at that house there look at that house there look at that house there as we go now you're going to when we are planning meet you over here our sales are going to meet with you and we're going to plan how every house everywhere in every village we're going to hear the word of god because that thing they said those people should not spread we're going to spread it and in every house and in every city, the word of God is going to be preached without any restriction or limitation in Jesus' name. We've seen every house. Let us look at chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 4. And therefore, they went, they that was scattered abroad, went, where? Every, now we've read of every house now we're reading of everywhere and they were preaching the word preaching the word preaching the word we'll see every house and we'll see every 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 house and every what thank you very much let's look at it in mark mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 and he's telling us uh, here and so in verse in verse 20 and they went forth and they preached tell me everywhere everywhere the lord walking with them you see it's not if anybody is threatening you we're not the first person to be threatened they were threatened but then even with that threat they went everywhere and they touched every house they entered every house every temple every synagogue everywhere they were preaching everywhere and that same spirit of the conqueror has come into our hearts into our lives in jesus name nobody will shut your mouth they went forth and they preached everywhere the lord walking with them the lord will walk with you confirming the word with signs following signs will follow in jesus name 
as we preach the word of God and then as people are turning to the Lord and as miracles, wonderful things are happening, I'm telling you that God is going to do great, wonderful things through your life and through everyone in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostles. We're looking at uh, chapter 8 and verse 40. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, we're looking at verse 40 and it says, but Philip was found in Azotus and passing through he preached in all where all the cities every city all the cities till he came to caesarea you, you thought that he only preached in samaria no he went beyond that all the cities what he did in samaria he went to this other city went to this other city went to that other city all the cities every city and the lord is giving us that challenge every house not only every house is everywhere not only everywhere every city all the cities and i pray the lord himself will give you this kind of liberty and authority to go and do it in jesus name did i hear you amen yeah. Yeah. And the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Matthew chapter 24. We're looking at verse 14. That the story of redemption and the story of the efficacy of the blood of the Lamb for our forgiveness, for our salvation, for our eternal life, and for our redemption, and then for eternal inheritance, that the Lord Himself will make you to take that story and that message and spread it everywhere. We're looking at Matthew chapter 24. 4 verse 14 it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations now we're talking about every house and everywhere and every city and to every creature to every man and now to all nations every nation and then shall the end come you will do it in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 17 verse 6 acts of the apostles chapter 17 verse 6 remember those people that threaten them those people that try to shut their mouth those people that try to say no you cannot and no you will not they said it must not spread beyond this place this is enough don't spread it again and then they carried it and look at chapter 17 of verse 6 and when they found them not they drew jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also it reached the whole world i said it reached the whole world and the time has come it's going to reach the whole world again even to the uttermost part of the earth. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I'm reading there from verse 13. Romans chapter 10. We're looking at verse 13. That this message of redemption. And this message that the Lord is telling us. We need to take to everywhere. Everywhere in the world. Every house in the world. Every city in the world. Every community in the world. Every nation in the world. That from your mouth, from my mouth, from you and from me. Is going to spread to the whole world in Jesus name. It says in Romans chapter 10 verse 13. For whosoever shall call on the name, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at verse 14 how they shall they call on him in whom they have not believed how are they going to call when they have not believed and he said how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and the many preachers were here if your hands are tied and your mouth is closed and your eyes are shut and then your legs are, your legs are chained and you're not moving you're not going how will the preachers go when you are chained down and tied down what do i mean by that when you are tied down with church activity church activity and the people are out there waiting and we just stay in the church from conference to conference to conference if there's anything that is tying us down in this a good and wonderful beautiful church is program december retreat program and then the watchnight service program and then here we have now 
the uh, Congress program. And then every Sunday of January, the, the Covenant month. And then in February, I told you before, maybe planning meeting. And then in March, there's you know one conference somewhere. And then in April, we have retreat program again. In May, there is a you know one cast retreat has come program again. And June, there's still some every month, every time there's something. And then all we're doing is program, program, program. And the Lord is saying, suspend those programs. And the Lord is saying, you, you can kind of mellow down on those programs. The thing to do is to take this story of redemption and take it everywhere in Jesus' name. All those programs, they only reach the people that are inside. And those things inside we're doing inside, they're like chains tying us down. And then we cannot reach out here and reach out here and reach out there. And the Lord is saying, it is not right for one person to hear the message a thousand times. When there are many other people that have not had the message once. This story of redemption and this word of the Lord that the Lord is bringing to us. That many people are outside there and he's saying reach every house and reach every city and reach every community and reach every nation. Don't just stay there and allow programs to tie you down. Thank God we are released. I said, thank God we're released when we scale down on all those programs and all the other church activities, church activities, you know, that we're doing and doing and doing, and then we're not able to reach out. Thank God the Lord is releasing us, and we're going to do it in Jesus' name. He says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be saved? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good news, of good things. But, uh, but they have but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who has believed our report. So then, faith comes by what? Tell me. Faith comes by hearing. But what if they don't hear? How will faith come? Faith for salvation. Faith for forgiveness. Faith for redemption. Faith for life eternal. And faith for having all the possibilities of their lives. All their potentials raised up. Faith to get everything they need to get from the Lord. If they don't hear, how will that faith come? So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, certainly, truly, assuredly, their sound went into all the earth. You see that? They didn't have television, their sound went into all the earth. They didn't have radio, their sound went into all the earth. They didn't have internet, their sound went into all the earth. They didn't have 24 by 7, but their sound went into all the earth. They were not as many as these. Look at the multitude of preachers, of ministers, of the people the Lord is passing the anointing to. They were not as many as these. And then it says, and their sound, and the word of God went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world and that time has come now that as we're going to all of nigeria all of west africa all of east africa all of central africa all of southern africa and all of north africa the sound of the word and the sound of the message is going to get everywhere once again in jesus name as we go as we go what are we telling them let me show you first corinthians chapter one what are we telling them first corinthians chapter one i'm reading there from verse 18 for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness they may count it foolish as if what is this you are talking about because we thought just going to church and doing the best you can and giving money to the beggars and getting this done will get us saved but we'll say no that is not the message the message is that jesus christ died on the cross of calvary and it is the blood that is shed for us that will be able to cleanse your sin and take away all the condemnation that you have for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of god 
Lord. And then he tells us, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise and where is the scribe and where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, by philosophy, by psychology, by all their sociology and all their GGG, they do not know God. It says by the wisdom of the world, they knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. That is, if the people are going to be saved, if they're going to believe, we must preach this message of redemption. That Jesus Christ died for sinful men and that the shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is what has come to give us life eternal people will think it is foolish but it is that preaching that is going to get people saved it tells us in verse 22 for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom but we preach who Christ where crucified that's it. it tells us again the blood of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus, the shedding of his blood, and the death of Jesus and resurrection unto the Jews, a stumbling block, unto the Greeks, foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. But I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech and of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And what's that? For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, what I want to know among you is that Jesus Christ has been crucified. Is that he shed his blood. And at the shedding of the blood of the Lamb, that it is the blood that is shed for us, that will take all our sins away. He says, that is what to spread everywhere as they say don't allow this thing to spread further beyond this place we take this message of christ of his life the message of christ of his death the message of christ of the shedding of his blood we take that message of his resurrection because he rose again for justification then we go and tell that everywhere first corinthians chapter 15 in first corinthians chapter 15 i'm reading from verse one no other gospel no other gospel this is the gospel the blood of jesus christ cleansing us from all unrighteousness in a first corinthians i'm looking in chapter 15 verse 1 moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also ye have received and when ye stand by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what i preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain anybody wanting to believe in vain here no i will not believe in vain and you will not believe in vain in Jesus' name. Then he said, For I declared unto you that first of all, that which I received, I declared that which I received. I didn't add, I didn't subtract just what I received, that's what I gave and that's what the Lord is telling us challenging you with, that everything you are receiving here about Jesus Christ as Savior Jesus Christ a Redeemer Jesus Christ who shed his blood everything you have received there, you are going to give it out and you are going to spread it in Jesus name, and then say for I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, he shed his blood, he shed his blood died for our sins according to the scriptures and then it says and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that's what we are to spread don't allow any other person to bring another kind of gospel mutilated gospel false doctrine unto you that you're not talking about the blood of jesus they think they only think about digging something uh, throwing this one away and looking at you know whatever it is in your background for fathers grandfather and all and they don't talk about the blood of jesus anymore and it is the blood it is by this cleansing of the blood we redeemed it is by this cleansing of the blood we become righteous they bring another gospel and we say no to any other gospel i said we say no to any other gospel galatians chapter one galatians chapter one verse six i marvel that she has so soon removed 
from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. They have, so, they have subtracted the blood of the Lamb. They have taken away the blood of the Lamb. They are not, no more talking about the blood of the Lamb. And they bring another gospel, a perverted gospel, a cheap gospel that doesn't have the death of Christ in it, that doesn't have the blood of Jesus in it, that is not putting all the emphasis and the sufficiency of the blood of the Lamb. And it just, you know, they tell you they if you go to wash, if you go to dig, if you go to do this, and then they give you a kind of prayer, a prayer book. If you read this, when this is happening, read this, when that is happening, read this. I hope you don't have anything like that. I said, don't have anything like that. If you have it, go and burn it up. And look at it. Where's the blood of Jesus there? Where's our redemption there? Where's our translation from the kingdom of darkness even to the kingdom of his dear son? Where's our freedom? over there nothing there it doesn't contain anything about all this their false doctrine i pray that you will not carry that thing in your life anymore in jesus name that when you get back on part of what you have to do as they did in the acts of the apostles the people that use all those magical acts and all those evil things they brought everything together and they bunch everything and now they can center their heart and their faith they can center it on the word of god and on the truth of the gospel that jesus christ died for our sins and jesus and jesus alone and jesus and jesus only he is the very foundation of our faith and is the giver of our salvation and he is sufficient for us in jesus name look at that verse 6 again galatians chapter 1 verse 6 i marvel that she has so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert, will, will model up and mutilate and destroy and uh, try to corrupt the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that, that, than that which she have received, let him be tell me i can't hear you some people are afraid maybe you are friends to the people that are perpetrating perverted gospel and then you cannot pronounce that if you are not part of the people so practicing from the word of god and then there's some parts of the bible you are not really you cannot pronounce if you are not part of them tell me out loud let them be because then it says it says in verse it says in verse 9 as we said before so say i now again if any man any man no matter who that will take away the efficacy of the blood of the lamb that will take away the provision of the blood of the lamb when jesus christ has said it and it, it says this is my blood of the new covenant the new testament and it is shed for the remission removal for the forgiveness salvation of the sins of many now it says if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that that you have received again tell me the rest let him be a cause galatians chapter 5 in galatians chapter 5 i'm reading there from verse 1 galatians chapter 5 verse 1 stand fast therefore the lord has given us the gospel this is the real gospel this is the true gospel and this is the full gospel and it says stand fast therefore in the liberty where with christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage behold i paul say unto you that if ye be circumcised christ shall profit you nothing our own situation is not even circumcision now our own situation now is you know all these things they are perpetrated here and there to do this and do this and do that denominational dogma that they are carrying about and the lord is saying that what he has given unto us is sufficient and i pray that you'll abide and remain in the sufficiency of the blood of jesus in jesus name it says i say unto you that if any of you be circumcised thinking that that is the that is a means of salvation christ shall profit you nothing for i testify again to every man that is circumcised size that he is a debtor to the whole law christ is become of no effect unto you as you try to add another thing bring another thing subtract this and, and bring in this christ will be of 
no effect unto you. Your life will be valueless, your message will be valueless, and your ministry will be valueless, and your association valueless, your local church you are teaching that to will be worthless and valueless. The Lord is bringing us back to his word. And he's telling us that Jesus only is our message. Jesus all in all we preach is our savior, is our sanctifier, is our healer, is our baptizer, and is the coming king, is the one that is coming from the sky. And then he will take us to heaven. Concentrate on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And it is that cross that the Lord is telling us that that is the means of the salvation of the world, the means of your salvation, the means of my salvation, and the means of our salvation together, and the means of the salvation of the whole world. Hold on to that, and don't let anybody take it away from you, and everywhere you go, spread it abroad. Spread it abroad. I said spread it abroad and then many people are going to come to the lord in jesus name the lord has told us that pardon and sonship it comes through the redemptive blood of jesus christ the lord has told us that purity and sanctification that comes from the redeeming blood of jesus christ now that redeeming blood that provides all that for us and then opens the gates of heaven for every one of us the lord is saying go and preach that that's enough and that is sufficient all the other things we have been trying to bring in in our confusion let's drop all that and say now it is Jesus and Jesus only. Tell me Jesus only. Jesus only. Jesus only, Jesus only. Jesus only. is a sufficiency. Rise up and tell the Lord you will do that. You will do that.